Hey, welcome everyone. Uh, this is the Litecoin Foundation's Friday official Twitter space. Uh, we're just getting everything kicked off. Uh, we uh, just to give you a little li a lay of the land today. We're going to be talking about um, a big announcement that we're making. Um, we have our special guest here, uh, Basic Swap Dex, and uh, I'll get to everyone and they can introduce themselves. We're going to be going over some of the things that are happening with both of our ecosystems and, uh, of course, giving you the latest updates from the Litecoin Foundation and everything about Litecoin. So uh, let's kick this off. Uh, uh, basic swap decks to let us know who's speaking from, from your standpoint and we'll, uh, if there's anybody we need to invite, you're a co-host co and just invite them up to the stage. Um, and that's great. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to be the sort of main speaker. My name's Dr. Kapil Amrasinga. You can call me Dr. Cap. Uh, I'm an advisor to Basic Swap Dex and its parent uh, project, the Particle Project, who essentially led the development for Basic Swap Dex. Um, see, that's kind of the key thing that you need to know. I'm very much a public face. Um, I'm very much involved in decisions relating to sort of how we reach out to people and how we sort of get the word out as it were and i've come on today very much to talk about basic swap decks in relation to litecoin and mimblewimble so yeah that's me well that's everybody's favorite topic um especially in our community uh do you want to explain uh, what basic swap decks is and and i know uh a particle are here as well uh if there's if there's anything you want to mention about them yeah so a, a little bit of history um basic swap decks as i mentioned was developed by the particle project the particle project is a cryptocurrency project that goes back to an inception of 2017 it was essentially a you know, it is still a decentralized it's a privacy ecosystem so we're focused on building privacy applications uh to essentially help make people fiat free uh, and to help encourage and spread the adoption of cryptocurrency for very practical and pragmatic uses. The first sort of decentralized application the Particle Project built uh, and our initial area of focus, um, which I'll touch on briefly, was the Particle Marketplace, which is a decentralized uh, marketplace that's highly fo privacy focused, essentially KYC free, uses a two party escrow, multiple layers of privacy. Um, in developing that, one of the things, you know, I'll sort of, you know, speak about, I'll probably, you'll speak, in, in developing that, I'll sort of speak about the challenges we encountered along the way. You know, that, that, that application uses the native token of the particle project, which is the part token. Um, but we realized and we encountered issues with adoption of this platform in relation to the token essentially being restricted to usage on centralized platforms, uh, you know, the inherent issues with building liquidity when that, that native token is there and actually just having a singular token. Um, as part of our drive towards developing multi-currency support for our e-commerce platform, one of the things we sort of made a decision to, and to improve the decentralization of our overall architecture and ecosystem, we made a very conscious decision to develop basic swap decks. Now, basic swap decks is an atomic swap decks. Uh, the development began in 2019, actually, um, properly. Uh, and as I said, it's a DEX, an atomic swap DEX. It is different from many other atomic swap DEXs in that it utilizes a fully decentralized distributed order book. It achieves that because the DEX essentially operates. It's a peer-to-peer -peer DEX. So every time a user launches it, they're essentially creating an instance or a node on their computer and that joins a peer-to-peer -peer network of other nodes that share messages across an encrypted intermediary data layer, which uh, a DSN is distributed storage network and an intermediary data layer, which uh, is called the SMSG network. And that essentially allows us to have highly private swaps. Uh, and there's a lot of functionality built into this data layer. I insist, I, I'll just clarify this now because people always ask it. There's no token required to use our DEX. It is just a DEX that you install. 
and you can basically get on with using it, using the coins that you wish to sort of use it with. Um, what makes our decks really stand out is not just that, um, but also that we were essentially the first decks and possibly one of the first decentralized applications to implement um, something called scriptless scripts. Uh, and that's a little piece of architecture that means that coins which don't have or don't possess programmable outputs can still be amenable to atomic swaps. What this allowed us to do was it allowed us to support Monero atomic swaps. And in fact, we were the very first decks to support by that, not just unidirectional Monero atomic swaps, but bidirectional atomic Monero atomic swaps. Um, and so this is the key thing about our decks is we are very much focused on supporting privacy coins, on supporting privacy architecture. We're very much believers in improving the fungibility of coins by providing that support to privacy architecture. And we are very much against censorship. And we believe that privacy, providing supporting privacy architecture helps build a truly robust and resilient uh, censorship-free ecosystem to enable censorship-free trading of goods and services. So that's really, you know, what Basic Swap Dex is about. And for that reason, we've, you know, we incorporated a number of coins that had a privacy focus to them. So it wasn't just Monero. We incorporated Fero, which uses the Lelantis Spark protocol. We incorporated Pivx, which uses zero knowledge proofs, uh, ZK Snarks. Um, you know, we incorporated our native coin, which is the particle coin, which utilizes Ring CT. But we also incorporated Litecoin, um, which uses Mimblewimble. Now, the initial implementation of Litecoin on our decks just supported the public balances. But what we've managed to do, certainly with our most latest update, is support balances for Mimblewimble. So when you install our DEX onto your device, launch it, and essentially you know, sync your desired chains that you want to trade and swap with, um, you know, what you can now do with our DEX before, it would just be that you could only trade and swap using public Litecoin. At this point, now you can essentially send um, Litecoin, you, you can basically send Litecoin into your wallet and then convert it from the Mimblewimble balance into the public Litecoin balance from which it can now be traded in the DEX. So this is the first step towards providing full uh, MWeb integration of Litecoin support into our DEX. And in turn, you know, we hope that we can help foster increased adoption of uh, Mimble Wimble usage within Litecoin and help you know grow the privacy community as a whole and, and increase adoption of privacy. So that, that, that that's a short summary. Yeah, I mean that that that's absolutely amazing, and it, it falls right into Litecoin's history. I mean, the first ever uh, atomic cross blockchain swap was was a Litecoin transaction. I think it was made with the. Uh, with Decred or something like that, and it, but one of the first atomic swaps was was made uh, with, with Litecoin. So this this falls right in line with history. And then of course, uh, Mimblewimble, which will I think we'll cover a little bit more as this goes on, uh, is you know the largest upgrade to to Litecoin and enhances privacy and essentially gives that option for Litecoin to become uh, positioned really for the future. Um, I'd also like to, to you know, have uh, Alan Austin, who's the managing director of the Litecoin Foundation, uh, just introduce himself. And, and you know, Dr. Cap is going to be um, a, a speaker in our upcoming event. So I'd like to you know, ask Alan to introduce himself and, and just mention a little bit about uh, the upcoming event. Yeah, thanks, Jay. Can you hear me okay? Perfect. Yeah, hi, hi everyone. Thanks for 
Thanks for joining. My name is Alan Austin. I'm the managing director at Litecoin Foundation. Um, for those that don't know what, what Litecoin Foundation is, we, we are a nonprofit organization. Um, you know, and our basic mission is to advance the Litecoin ecosystem. And we do this. You know, our goal is to see worldwide Litecoin adoption. Um, and and some of the ways we do this is through education, research, uh, research and development, providing different information and resources to the community and community support. Um, and, and pretty much any way we can to help support growth and adoption um, in terms of, of Litecoin and its development. And um, some of the just current initiatives we're working on, you know, include some of our own wallet development. Again, education and support. We do online events. We do in-person events, which which I'll mention, you know, uh, one of the things we and uh, partnerships is another thing. Um, and then another thing that's very important is is. Um, is mweb and we're going to talk more about that but i'll just touch on two things real quick so we are doing an in-person event and we, we will have our our fourth annual i believe it's the fourth annual i'm just double checking now one two yes <laughs> uh annual litecoin summit uh we will be holding that in july in nashville tennessee it'll be the same week as the bitcoin conference sort of overlapping so that'll be ha happening on july 24th and 25th um it'll uh all of our events have always been quality with quality you know speakers and one of the things we'll definitely be highlighting is the importance of privacy and a amongst other things so um uh very we we priced it to be very reasonable and affordable for everyone um litecoin.net is our website and you can get information about the summit there um we um everybody's obviously welcome to join and i think it'd be a great opportunity not only to hear some fantastic speakers but to learn to educate to, to network with some great people again it'll it'll be a, a pretty big crowd there because the bitcoin conference will also be happening there so that's one way to to come learn more um i just wanted to circle back real quick though and um, uh, I won't talk about any of the, the more technical side of things, but um, one of the things we'd recently added um, to Litecoin was this optional privacy layer called MWeb. And I just want to mention, so so basically for those that don't know what MWeb is, it's basically an opt-in privacy layer on top of Litecoin. And what it does is it provides the user a basic level of confidentiality concerning their finances. Um, and what it does, it does this by concealing basically three things the sender, the receiving, the sending address, the receiving address, and then the amount of crypto you're sending. Um, why is this important? Um, so so it fe uh, uh, we feel like this was really the missing uh, thing to when it comes to sound money. Um, up until now, like cryptocurrency in general, including Bitcoin, has really been lacking these some very basic privacy features. Um, things that you see even today in traditional banking, um, so, for example, if you go to pay with a credit card, even, you know, that that merchant doesn't know what's in your bank account or if you use cash, nobody knows what's in your bank account. If you're if you're doing payroll, you know, you don't know what else someone is making, nor should you. Um, and right now with with the public blockchain ledger, um, without this privacy layer, there's there's it's a little bit easier to start tracing and tracking. Um, why is this important? Um, putting aside the fact that it should be a fundamental human right. It really helps um, protect. It really helps um, ensure that personal information related to transactions is not available to unauthorized parties. Helps prevent like things like price discrimination, extortion, and other practices that can target you know vulnerable vulnerable people and you know things like that. So it's it's not anything that's already not in place in traditional finance, but it's been missing from in the crypto world. So with this optional privacy layer. People now have the ability to be a little bit more private about their finances when they choose to. And because it's opt in, the option to not be so private when you, when you don't want it is also there. So um, that's sort of the sort of the high level of why we've added out of this functionality. Um, and we should uh, we should really give a big shout out and thank you to David Burkett, who is really the lead developer on MWeb and has you know, brought this uh this from from its infancy into in into the up, upgraded version of litecoin core so um which was a, a major major process we went through where miners signal and accept that uh that litecoin is going to be upgraded with mweb so this is a this is a community affair and and you know tip of the hat to uh to david burkett who is has really been the you know the uh, the mastermind behind not only you know, making this happen but making it happen in a way that really really works. There's a lot of 
you know, expectation when you have a 12 and a half year old blockchain that has never been down, that's never, you know, really had any kind of um, of issue to, to make something that's a ma- massive upgrade and make it work. Uh, so shout out to David Burkett and of course um, to Charlie Lee, who really envisioned uh, this next step in Litecoin's evolution. Uh, so, yeah, let me just add one real quick thing too. And, and, and you know, pri- pri- we talk about MWeb and adding this, this 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 privacy layer, which again it helps protect and safeguard like individuals, businesses, and their finances. But it also adds fungibility, and and fungibility is incredibly important when it comes to money. Meaning, one dollar should always be equal to one dollar. Um, you you should not be able to use. Uh, a certain coin because it's been traced back to some questionable activity that maybe you weren't even involved with, right? So it, 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 there's several benefits there, and again, I won't I won't go into too much of the detail, but but there's it, again, it's it's been the one component of sound money that up until recently had we believe has been missing, and this is why it's so important. Uh, so, Dr. Cap, do you want to? Uh you know, fill us in a little bit about this announcement and, and kind of, you know, lay the groundwork for, for why you felt this was the next stage for basic swap decks. Um, yeah. So firstly, I just want to follow from Alan and just say, I really respect Litecoin as a community for, you know, the decision they collectively made to support an implementation of Mimble Wimble. Uh, and I actually really like the way they went about doing it. it to, to my understanding is essentially the way they essentially made two chains almost running in parallel that you can sort of switch in and out of providing that optional privacy. Uh, I think it has great enterprise applications for, you know, it really expands the enterprise applicability for Litecoin moving forward. And to sort of touch on what Alan said, you know, when you can provide robust privacy for your end users, you are actually providing them with a degree of fraud resistance. You are, you know, protecting your end users from exploitation from bad actors who might wish to analyze your financial inflows and outflows and take advantage of that information in some way. Um, I, I think I have a huge amount of respect to the Litecoin community for doing that. Uh, my personal view, you know, I think as, as Alan said, privacy is a fundamental right. I'm a great believer in free flow of information, and I think the purest form of information free flow can occur in privacy guarded environments. So when you've got privacy safeguarded, when you're having a truly private conversation between two individuals that trust each other, then you can truly say in what you feel and mean that allows for a lot more creativity, diversity of ideas, diversity of exchange. And that diversity of ideas actually, you know, on a very fundamental level, I think that allows for, you know, di- diversity of adaptation, diversity of technology to di- and diversity of art. You know, lots of ideas can flourish, novelty can flourish in, in environments where we safeguard privacy. And that provides, you know, as speaking as a, as a doctor, as a medical doctor in my background, I believe that provides adaptational advantages to us as a species. Um, you know, rather than having a purely public environment where everything can be surveilled. Uh, and if you can surveil everything, you know, that means potentially actors can suppress things. Uh, as Alan pointed out, you know, it's possible to blacklist transactions or certain transaction addresses. Uh, and in that way, you're impeding the free flow of information. And on a very fundamental level, if you have a if you have no privacy, the, the, the great risk always running forward is that you develop echo chambers because people will either censor themselves because they don't feel comfortable expressing themselves and society censor themselves. And then you lose that output of diversity of ideas that then allows culture to flourish, that allows technology to flourish. So I really respect the Litecoin community for making that conscious decision to adopt privacy as part of its core architecture. As a representative of basic swap decks and, and, and particle, I will say, you know, we respect projects that respect privacy. It's very straightforward. We will adopt projects that respect privacy and we will push and promote and help expand the adoption of projects that adopt and respect privacy. So that is very much 
the leading ethos behind why we included Litecoin support. Um, from a development point of view, the decisions we made, we when we launched, we launched with Litecoin support. We kept it quiet because as a project, we we're developing with pretty minimal resources. So we devoted that all essentially to a hard focus on development so that we could produce a product that is real and that works as opposed to announcing vaporware. We did that. We had to focus some of our initial development efforts on just making sure that our implementation of Monero atomic swaps was secure, that it worked, that it was bug free. We've done that. Uh, and that's now given us the time to kind of focus back onto Litecoin and to really do the phased implementation of privacy into it. Now, we are, I say, you know, that the big announcement there is that we are, you know, going to be implementing full Mimblewimble support. That is sort of, you know, pending the next sort of major release of the, uh, I think it's the next sort of Litecoin core code release. So I understand there is going to be a big upgrade to Litecoin's core architecture. And once that's done, certain dependencies will then fall into place, which will allow us to implement full Mimblewimble support. And then this is important because I think, you know, I think something needs to be stressed about atomic swaps is they are the most safe and secure means of transacting value across blockchains. Um, one thing I will also say just, you know, with, you know, is that, sorry, I'm losing my point here. I was basically going to say, you know, with our decks, you know, it's not that you, you post the offer and those can be partially filled or completely filled. And, you know, as I said, atomic swaps, you know, because they are safe and secure and they are direct, they don't require third parties. They don't require any sort of trusted middleman, as it were. And the nice thing is also with with atomic swaps and particularly with our decks and the way we've gone about it is you don't need to have third party fees. So, you know, we're really, we, we feel that this is essentially, you know, when you do the swaps on our decks, you are just paying the transaction fees on the networks for the corresponding pairs. So one of the things that we are really conscious of is that we, we knew that Mimble Wimble adoption had been a bit slow on the uptake earlier. And one of the things we're hoping to achieve with the way we're going about this is that once we enable that full Mimble Wimble support, you know, you'll be able to go use our decks to essentially swap in and out of Bitcoin to Litecoin to Fero to Monero to any of our supported pairings. And you'll be able to do that at an advantage that's fundamentally competitive to centralized exchanges because we don't adopt the third party fee. One of the nice things about our DEX and one of the things I think will help encourage adoption of Mimblewimble Litecoin is that actually we have some automated trading scripts um, where they will literally, you basically launch, you install the DEX, you install basic swap DEX, you load the script, you put the inputs, so you basically specify which coin pairings you wish to trade, you specify how and how frequently you wish to publish orders. And this script will just automatically republish orders on our decks, and it will automatically adjust the price points of those orders by sort of using an Oracle reference point, which at default settings CoinGecko, but you can actually specify uh, you can even specify the frequency of, of publishing these orders. So we're very much producing a DEX that allows individual users to be their own market makers. So, you know, um, publish the orders, set the prices. You can even set a premium above the given price or below the premium price as a taker or maker. And in this way, we're allowing our, the users of the Litecoin community and indeed all cryptocurrencies that are supported by a DEX to move away from dependence and reliance on centralized exchanges uh, and very much move into enabling them and empowering them to become their own market makers uh, in a very much an automated fashion. So I think that, 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 and that I think will help build liquidity into the privacy ecosystem 
And I think that will help build collaboration in the privacy ecosystem. And I think that will build confidence and encourage growth within the privacy ecosystem. Uh, and, and that's certainly things that we are looking to achieve. And that is very much what's driving our adoption of Litecoin, um, particularly Litecoin Mimble Wimble. We have a lot of respect for you guys. Yeah, and it's mutual. Uh, you know, it's it, it it it's been you know a, a long road for for Litecoin in general, but uh, you know particularly for the development team that's worked on on MWeb and and the processes that we've had to go through and 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 really bringing this to the stage it's at. And everyone should know that you know MWeb is live on Litecoin Core, and you're able to make these MWeb optional transactions at the moment. Um, the next step has really been uh, to make sure that we have accessibility to wallets. And, and that process is uh, a, a little bit more complicated, but it's something um, David Burkett and the team has really wanted to make sure is absolutely flawless and perfect so that um, when MWeb becomes accessible to various wallets, um, that uh, it, it you know it works and it works well, so you guys are really on the cutting edge here of being one of the you know the first entities to you know not not only just recognize MWeb, which a lot of, a lot have already done, but to to actually start working and uh, on the implementation side of things. So uh, I give you guys a lot of credit as well. No, that, thank you. I re really appreciate that. Um, uh, and, you know, I, I really kind of look forward to what we're going to be doing as we move forward. I really look forward to the advancements within within Litecoin and within basic swap decks. And I really look forward to, you know, working with you and the other teams that we support and really helping to bring them together. Um, because I, I see a real vision for the privacy ecosystem moving forward. I, I see, I call it the privacy liquidity sphere. I see it as a huge, huge undertapped and much wanted area amongst not just users of cryptocurrency, but just users of regular, you know, commerce. Um, and that feeds back into e-commerce as well. The number of people I talk to who wish they didn't have to be reliant on systems where they have to entrust personal data to third parties, which eventually leak um, into the hands of bad actors which can then be used against, you know, without sort of dwelling on that too much, you know, uh, you know, I respect systems that can move us towards a much more purist form of privacy. Uh, certainly going back to MWeb, you know, the thing that I really love is, you know, hiding the receivers, the senders and the amounts from third parties, and then integrating that into a DEX ecosystem that's designed to prevent metadata leak, that is designed to, you know, it, it, it makes a lot of the, you know, a lot of what we're doing, you know, um, one of the features that I sort of touched on earlier was um, scriptless scripts. Our implementation of scriptless scripts uh, uses a technology called adapter signatures. I won't go into too much detail about that, but what it fundamentally enables, and going back on what I said earlier, is it's the ability for a coin that lacks programmable outputs to be involved in atomic swaps with a coin that does. Um, and, you know, in, in doing so and having these having these swaps occurring on this sort of end to end encrypted data layer or SMSG sort of data layer, you know, which prevents metadata leak and, and really obfuscates um, the act of a swap from a third party. So it provides a really high level of privacy to those who want it, who need it. Uh, and that's, you know, that's a lot of legitimate people out there in the world today. You know, and I certainly, you know, look at that from an enterprise R&D um, perspective. Absolutely. Uh, so we, we posted the announcement that uh, that you guys have made. Uh, so it's now live. It's it's at the top of this uh, this space. If if everybody wants to read more about, you know, the, the specifics uh, of what's happening here with this announcement uh, and Obviously, this is kind of the level that the Litecoin development team is is playing on, and 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 obviously the the level that uh, that you guys have you know are, are playing on. We're we're really trying to you know 
revolutionize the future of digital currencies and the way that people can openly and privately uh, uh, transact, uh, whether that's in payments, whether that's in uh, peer-to-peer, and, and of course now with this Atomic Swap initiative, which um, you know is right right at the heart of what you know uh, a lot of us believe in, and that the future of, of digital currencies and obviously this uh, cryptocurrency revolution is is, is moving towards. Um, Alan, did you did you want to talk a little bit more about uh, uh, this announcement or the summit or MWEB in general? Um, no, I mean I think we 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 sort of covered it. Yeah, you know, we talk about how things are might be moving slow. I, I don't know. If, I, I I would maybe agree, but I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing either. You know, rolling out something slower and doing it right. It also it takes time to to you know create light client and, and 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 other things that people adopt. And also just the whole idea of privacy is still something sort of new um, because when we you know. I think of Bitcoin, uh, the, the far majority of people look at it as a store of value. And I think when you're keeping something as a store of value, it starts to become more important. And it's just, it's going to take some time for that. But I think over time, we're going to see how the, having this, these, these, uh, this optional, you know, opt in level of privacy for when you need that is going to be continue to become more and more important as as cryptocurrency in general grows and as the use of of crypto grows um, in terms of payments and sending between people and so forth yeah absolutely and um we are you know we we are have invited uh, dr cap to speak at the litecoin summit as alan mentioned uh, which will take place in july in nashville so we invite everybody from from it doesn't necessarily have to be from like coming community tickets are eighty four dollars we're putting on this event because we want everyone that's interested in the future of this space uh to be able to join in there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of events out there where it's you know three four figure kind of pricing to to go to these events um and it's very inclusive and you know there's a vip option for some ridiculous price um we we're not doing that we're we're doing an event where we want everyone that's interested in this space that wants to be a part of either the litecoin ecosystem or any kind of cryptocurrency um future that they envision to become and be part of the conversation so um we're you know, we're really proud. We this will be the fourth summit that we've put on. Uh, last year, we we took a little bit of a, um, a an evolution in, in a different direction by putting on a, a proof of work summit, uh, which we did in collaboration with uh, ETC and a lot of other partners. Uh, and so this is uh, the reemergence of of the Litecoin summit. And um, go to uh, Litecoin.net and check it out. Uh, we just announced our first round of speakers, and uh, if you'd like to get more involved in the summit in some way, uh, you can reach out to the Litecoin Foundation. There's uh, obviously different ways that you can contact us or contact uh, myself or or Alan. Yeah, I, I just want to say I'm really looking forward to you, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, you know, it, I know we're doing a uh, Twitter X space today, but, you know, I really look forward to hopefully being able to give more live demonstrations of our ecosystem and the Litecoin ecosystem being used in our ecosystem uh, and how, you know, perhaps, you know, getting that opportunity to talk out and more visually lay out our plans to sort of help advance the cause of e-commerce adoption uh, and privacy within within the Litecoin ecosystem. You know, as I said, I, we think it's an excellent currency. You know, I, I joke internally, I joke internally, my crypto wife says she loves Bitcoin, but she's always doing Litecoin behind his back. Uh, that's certainly true when it comes to me. Uh, I, I certainly have a preference towards using Litecoin for a lot of our you know, a lot of core transactions. I think it has very nice liquidity, very nice speed. Uh, and I really, really like the fact that they are embracing privacy, or, well, optional privacy 
I, I think that is a very pragmatic decision. And I look forward to sort of talking about how our roads intersect as projects. Yeah, and it's funny you mentioned that because that seems to be a, a worldwide, I don't want to say phenomenon because it's not a phenomenon, it's a, a worldwide, uh, 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 I don't know what word to call it, but Litecoin is really uh, taking its place more and more, uh, not only as you know we've seen in, in the end of 2023 as one of the most active blockchains in the world, um, but uh, you know, on certain days has performed more transactions than Bitcoin and Ethereum combined. So Litecoin is playing at a different level uh, in the transactions world, in, in, the, in what is being built in the Litecoin ecosystem, and, and also uh, in the payments world, real usage. Um, Alan, did you want to talk a little bit more about payments and how Litecoin's leading the way there? Um, yeah, I don't want to get too, I'll be, not to get too far off of the specific topic here, but yeah, it's important uh, from, from the fact that it, at the end of the day, no matter what you're doing, you know, what, whatever you're building on top of a blockchain, it's important that you're building on top of a blockchain that's, that's going to be around, you know, that's continuing to grow and has the properties of, of um, you know, I'd say fairly launched decentralization type properties that can be carried by the community because you never want to be relying on 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 a you know a small handful of people or or a central type of any type central type of organization that can that can make decisions and you never know what might happen later. Um, one thing, just briefly, you know, we're we're really uh, excited, and encouraged by is the growth of payments on Litecoin. Um, for the, those that don't know, BitPay, BitPay is the like, I believe it's the largest crypto payments processor um, out there. And since Litecoin was added, uh, I think two, two and a half years ago, it's continued to grow where now um, quite often as they report each month, um, Litecoin is, in fact, the last reporting, Litecoin is the most um, used cryptocurrency for payments, even above Bitcoin and even more combined than Ethereum, Dogecoin, and I think every other coin on, on the platform combined. So why is this important? Is because this is real world use. These are actual payments. These are people buying things and spending money. So when we talk about what's what could be possible and we talk about what actually is happening, um, Litecoin is actually being used. And um, the idea that it's actually being used more for payments than even Bitcoin is is very encouraging. And this is something that we, you know, we like to see. As, as, as one of the most important elements of, of crypto is being able to use it and spend it. And um, so um, we, we're continuing to push for adoption, helping to onboard merchants um, and see Litecoin continue to be used more and more, as, you know, throughout the world as we grow. Yeah, I, I just want to say sort of from my own independent perspective, uh, but I know several members of the project agree with me. I, I think, you know, the speculative potential of Litecoin is severely unrecognized in the context of that. You know, it is, you know, one of the most highly adopted cryptocurrencies for actual real world use. Um, and there are very good reasons why, you know, that comes with speed and low fees, uh, brand name recognition, security, the safety model for it, and the decentralization, as you mentioned, you know, I, 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 I've been, I've been in a few sort of Twitter spaces with Litecoin Underground and a few others. And, you know, I, I know that perhaps members of the Litecoin community, perhaps the speculators may be, you know, not necessarily happy with the speculative performance of Litecoin. But I think it's just, you know, I think it's it's a powder keg that's waiting to explode. I, you know, I, I think when the ETFs do eventually arrive to Litecoin, I think they're going to be very favorable because I personally think from a speculative point of view, if I'm looking and going, what is actually being used? Because that, what provides convenience? Because I'm a great believer in the idea that convenience is value because, you know, whatever convenience saves time, you know, whatever saves time creates convenience, therefore create, you know, time is money, therefore convenience is value. So Litecoin as a payments modality is very convenient. And I think that is a very under-recognized fact amongst the broader speculative community. So I think, you know, just want to sort of light the way and say, I think there's huge potential for growth, you know, within the Litecoin ecosystem uh, in the years moving forward. I don't think that can be underrepresented enough. Yeah, thank you for saying that too. I appreciate that. And I, and I think it's great that, that you recognize that and, and that 
we're seeing this, um, you know, price aside, which, you know, let's be real, we're, we're all a little bit frustrated because if you look at everything that's been happening, you know, I, I'd argue the price should be you know, significantly higher than where it's at. But that said, like almost every other metric continues to grow. And, you know, it'd be concerning if that wasn't the case, but it couldn't be further from the opposite. And, you know, over a billion dollars in, in USD value sent a day. I mean, almost every single metric suggests, you know, uh, incredibly positive movement and adoption uh, with the exception of price, which, as we know, it doesn't always follow, you know, initially. Usually price will ultimately, you know, value will ultimately catch up with price. I, I do I, I do think it's it's been highly underrated. I think part of that also is because there's a lot of excitement around things like ordinals and NFTs and art and people, things like that. But when it comes to the idea of, of crypto being used as as, as, um, as as a monetary exchange like money, I don't think that in itself is inherently like that exciting when, when you talk about it, um, just, you know, versus being able to do smart contracts and, and, and other types of things, which, by the way, we're, we're you know, we're, we're seeing other types of things being adopted on Litecoin, I should say. But from a from a value standpoint it in the long term it's it's arguably one of the most the largest use case that it, we, we can have with crypto is the use of money and um, i think it's just a matter of time before the value of this network and what it provides um you know sort of becomes a more reality for for more people i think so absolutely and and how it's positioned for the future and we see that in the number of transactions that take place, you know, recently hitting, you know, there were days that we were day after day over a million transactions in one day in 24 hours. And there's blockchains that, you know, have large communities and, you know, they're, they're in the top 10 and the number of transactions they were doing were less than a hundred thousand. So it's, it, it's, it's very, very interesting to see, you know, how this will evolve in the future. Um, uh, Cap, do we want to hint at the competition? Yes, I was uh, just thinking, and I'm, I'm just getting to that. Uh, thank you for bringing that up. Um, you know, kind of to celebrate, just just for those listening, and, and you know, pass the word around, and, and we're promoting this at the minute to kind of celebrate the fact that we've made those first steps of. And web adoption into or for Litecoin into our decks. You know, we we have launched a uh, a competition, essentially a prize giveaway uh, for something that is highly collectible and highly rare. Um, we're we're talking about physical Litecoins. Um, so it's a special collection that was released in 2013. Um, and there were about, I believe, only 2,000 of these ever minted. Uh, and I'm just kind of getting up the details for it now, but basically it was the, um, yeah, it was, was it the, yeah. So basically you've had a very kind benefactor who's both, who's long time in cryptocurrency has been a supporter of both Litecoin and the particle and basic swap ecosystems. And he happens to have around 20 of these. So over the next sort of 10 weeks, we sort of doing a prize giveaway, two of these now, just to kind of talk you through them, they're physical Litecoins. They contain one Litecoin each. They are the Leilana one Litecoin first run bullions. Now then they're not bullion in the sense of gold and, and silver, but they're certainly bullion in the sense that they're very special, very rare. I would call these some of the rarest physical real world NFTs imaginable. Um, and as I mentioned, only 2000 minted. Uh, each coin contains one Litecoin. Uh, the private key under a peelable layer. It comes in its own protect, protect, uh, protective coin capsule. And the first bits, you know, we, we posted some images up in some of our promotional material for this, but, you know, we, we've obscured some of the first bits uh, on the images for the added security. Um, we've seen these going for sale for about $1,000 a piece on, on eBay at times. So, you know, they are quite valuable and and as i said we have 20 of them and we are giving two you know we're giving two every week for 10 weeks now if you see any tweets related to this competition from either the basic swap or particle threads basically what you got to do is retweet that tweet because it's a competition we want people to know about it 
uh, and then essentially go to the Particle website, particle.io, P-A-R-T-I-C-L.io, download, install the marketplace and put a bid on a physical Litecoin. If you go through all of these steps, you will be entered into a draw. Every week, we will pick a winner at random from this draw and we will notify you. You'll need to give us an address to send it to as part of this. Um, we will then, you know, physically post those, you know, those really vintage coins across to you. So I think this is a really sort of special opportunity um, for, you know, people who have been in the Litecoin community for a long time. And indeed, cryptocurrency as a whole for, you know, real collectors and people who truly value the history of this space. I think this is a real real opportunity to literally own physically a part of it um and that's the competition uh, and that's you know hopefully to you know just to say thank you for what you know thank you to the litecoin community for what you've been what you've done and what you are doing uh, thank you for sort of inviting us to nashville tennessee to sort of present our work with basic swap and thank you for giving us the opportunity to you know work with you guys going forward this is our way of saying thank you so keep an eye out for those tweets you know, real piece of history there waiting to be, you know, one. Uh, and it's not just the one, it, you know, it's, you're going to get two opportunities every week for the next 10. So, you know, that, that's our way of saying thank you very much, guys. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, so be sure to uh, follow Basic Swap Decks uh, and keep an eye out with that. I'm sure we'll be sharing it as well. Um, you might want to keep one or two for Nashville. Maybe there's something we can do there with... Uh, uh, a little prize or something like that. Um, so I, I think we'll we'll start to wrap it up. Uh, this was uh, fantastic. We've shared the announcement. Uh, if you want to check out and learn more about what what it is that uh, uh, has been launched, um, there's a, uh, a tweet out there from Basic Swap Decks and, and the foundation. Um, there's a little write up about it um you'll probably hear more about it as it evolves and be sure to uh uh to swap to follow everybody so you can learn more about the competition so a big thank you to you dr cap and alan uh, for being here today and uh we're looking forward to uh going to tennessee thanks jay thank thanks to you both thank you jay and thanks alan